Hello, and welcome to this lesson on vector algebra. In the previous lesson, we sort of built some definitions of scalars and vectors and what it meant to be a vector or a scalar. In this lesson, we'll start to put that into a little bit of practice and take a look at what it means to do arithmetic with vectors and scalars. And now there's two ways to really look at it. The first is sort of we'll call vector on vector arithmetic. And what's gonna happen here is addition and subtraction. And when we talk about scalar on vector, we're gonna be working with multiplication and division. So let's first look at vector addition. Um, two algebraic laws that really come into play are the commutative, which means we can rotate things around. That just says that the vector A plus the vector B is equal to the vector B plus the vector A. It doesn't matter which order we put these things in. Also, the associative law. And that says that the order in which we evaluate multiple addition operations doesn't matter. So vector A plus the quantity, vector B plus vector C is equal to the quantity, vector A plus vector B plus vector C. So it means that it doesn't matter which order we evaluate these addition operations in, we're gonna get the same answer. Another principle that really comes into play is the parallelogram law. And this really illustrates how vector addition works. So let's go ahead and make a parallelogram. And what we see here is that if we have a vector A, let's say that this bottom left corner is the origin. If we have a vector A, and we have another vector at the same point in the origin, that's vector B, their sum will be the diagonal of the parallelogram all the way out to that corner. So that will be A vector A plus vector B. Another way we can look at it, if we draw, draw another parallelogram, we'll get something that kind of looks like this. We don't have to consider it at the origin, so vector A will stay the same, but instead we could draw vector B as starting or having its origin at the endpoint of vector A and moving on. That's vector B. Then, of course, the vector that connects the entire chain here, again, the corner, the diagonal of the parallelogram, is vector A plus vector B. So let's put some numbers to that. Let's go ahead and say we have two vectors. Let's just say vector A is equal to, we'll use this bracketed notation for now. We'll say that A has got a horizontal component of five and a vertical component of four. Maybe that's the X and that's the Y. And vector B has, let's kind of keep it like it's drawn up there. Let's say it has a horizontal component of five, but a vertical component of zero. If we draw or write vector A plus vector B, we'll have these two vectors, five and four, plus a vector with five, zero. And the horizontal terms add and the vertical terms add. We'll just have five plus five and four plus zero. So the result is 10 and four. So that's how we add up vectors. Now subtraction is just addition in the opposite direction. So the way to think of it is instead of doing a minus b, what's really going on is a plus negative vector b. So we bring our parallelogram back. Let's say vector a starts at the same point. Let's say that's our vector a. And we still have vector B is the same vector, this horizontal component. Now, minus B would be a vector that sort of looks like this, vector in that direction, right? We could also draw it as coming from the origin, one like that. That's also minus B. So the result there is going to connect to that mirrored corner of the parallelogram. So that would be A vector A minus vector B. Let's go ahead and try that numerically. Let's use the same vectors as before. We'll still have 
vector a is equal to 5, 4, and vector b is equal to 5, 0. a minus b is equal to 5 and 4 minus 5 and 0. And when we do it this way, we can just do subtraction like normal. 5 minus 5 and 4 minus 0. That leaves us with a vector that's 0 and 4. So there we go. And there's some subtraction. So now let's talk about multiplication with scalars. So we'll have a scalar times some vector. The big algebraic principle here is the distributive property. And so if we have a vector, or excuse me, a scalar s times our vector a, and what we'll have is s times our little a and little b, and that s just distributes to all of the components there. So we have a vector that is s times a and s times b. Also, if we have a bunch of different things, say we have the sum of two scalars, s plus r, times the product, or excuse me, the sum of two vectors, let's say a vector a plus vector b. So we can FOIL this to all get the same result. So this is going to equal s times vector a plus s times vector b plus r times vector a. We're just FOILing r times vector b. And then this distributes into the components of a and b and so on, and then we add them all up and get our results. So let's go ahead and put numbers to that. Let's work an example there. Let's keep using the same vectors for a and b. We'll have a is five and, whoa, five and four. And vector b is five and zero. And let's say that s is equal to four and r is equal to one half. So there's a bunch of different ways we could resolve this, some probably faster than others, but we'll go ahead and do it the long way just to see it all worked out and see that both of those principles put in action. So four plus one half times vector with five and four plus the vector with five and zero. So that would equal four times five and four plus four times five and zero plus one half times five and four plus one half times five and zero. Now the scalars distribute in, and so we get vectors now of four times five, four times four, plus the vector with four times five, and four times zero, plus a vector with one half times five, and one half times four, plus a vector with one half times five and one half times zero. Now we resolve all that arithmetic and we get vector with 20 and 16 plus a vector with 20 and zero plus a vector with five halves and two plus a vector with five halves and zero. Now it's just regular vector addition. So we get one big vector that's got 20 plus 20 plus 5 halves plus 5 halves and 16 plus 0 plus 2 plus 0. So what's that going to get us? That'll be 40 plus 10 halves and 18. 10 halves is just 5, so that would just get us a result of 45 and 18. So there's our resulting vector, 45 and 18. So that is all there is to it with vector algebra. Like I said, basically the same as regular algebra. 
Um, just got to sort of pay attention to a few little details along the way. And remember that when talking about arithmetic with vectors, when it's vector on vector, we're going to be doing addition and subtraction. And when it's scalar on vector, that's multiplication and division. We have other mechanisms to sort of approximate and act like multiplication and division for vectors, and we'll talk about those later. So as always, if you have any questions, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Thank you.